Welcome back to Hyperbaric Living Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Masha. And today we have a patient story. I have a very special guest. She appeared on a podcast, even though she didn't know about it. I recorded a podcast with her physician, late Dr. Kelly Ryder, who treated Tina for her brain injury. I had a girl who was 40 years old, was a question writer, a jumper, national champion, and she had fallen off some horses and just taken some hits and blows. And she got off 23 medications by using hyperbarics and we got her brain up to like 95% function. It was at 4% function. Like she was wow. basically existing and then they put her on the drugs and she was still struggling, poor thing, at 40 years old. And a lot of people got back to me asking, please tell us her story in more detail. So here I have Tina with me on a podcast and she's going to tell us her story, her brain injury and how hyperbaric oxygen therapy helped in her recovery. Welcome to the show, Tina. Thank you so much. I'm cool. really excited to have you with me. Tina, let's start from the beginning. The day of the injury, how did it happen? And what happened? Well, actually for a good, for 25 years of my life, I rode horses, um, jumping pr predominantly. And of course that was around time concussions weren't really a big deal. So, I mean, I, I can't even tell you the number of falls that I had that I hit my head and just got right back on and got right back to it not even thinking twice about it. And, um, I mean, and I had some, you know, some big injuries where I broke my back and my neck and things like that, but it was basically walk it off, get back on again. And there was no concussion protocol. I mean, we had helmets, but when you're riding a 1200 pound animal, it's, you know, it is what it is. And then in 2013, um, I got diagnosed with a, well, no, before that, I dated the month of my 30th birthday. So in 2000, I got diagnosed with a pineal gland cystic tumor. And um, that was a really, really long road because it's such a rare tumor. 1% of the population gets it. And no one really knew what to do with me. They, It was a wait and see approach and it continued to grow and caused me issues and I had hydrocephalus. I was having seizures multiple times a day. I would turn blue, stop breathing. It, my life got turned upside down. 2013, May 15th of 2013, I had brain surgery, which was the most terrifying thing ever. And um, I had to have the surgery in Los Angeles, California, because where the doctor was and he was you know highly seemingly reputable and turned out that he a couple years after my surgery it turned out that he wasn't qualified to do the surgery so I, I about a year after my surgery I started having problems um the bone flap across the back of my head um it got rejected so it's free floating in my head along with the, all the hardware too, all of that got rejected. So I have no bone across the back of my skull at all. The advertisement for it was, you know, eight weeks and you're right back to your life. And so I was like, oh, that sounds great, you know, but that wasn't the case at all. It was, it was starting over, learning how to drive again, learning how, I mean, learning everything again, learning your alphabet when you're almost 40 years old, <laughs> You know, the simplest things and it was you know trying but I didn't enjoy it <laughs> and have but, you tried hyperbaric oxygen therapy in that period of time or no, I knew nothing, nothing about it I okay. knew nothing absolutely nothing about it they just kept giving me more medication I was on three different opioids and 23 other medications and then you know shuffle around some more you know it gets shuffled around and nobody really did anything beneficial for me. So fast forward to 2020, you met Dr. Kelly Ryder. I met, yeah. So I was basically at the end of my rope. I, I, I had that same gut feeling of I'm not going to make it this. And plus I was just existing. I wasn't living. So, you know, what that means is you go, can go to work for like maybe four hours 
and then you have to sleep the rest of the day to recover from it. And that's not a life. And I was still struggling with remembering things. And, you know, I, I really felt like I had dementia. I mean, and then you're like, am I just dumb or, you know, what is the deal here? So when I, I met Kelly, I was literally at the end of my rope. I, I had pretty much lost all hope because I just, I had tried everything. You know, I had done everything I that I knew about up to that point. And not one time did anyone say, hey, give hyperbarics a shot. Now, I didn't even know. Honestly, I didn't even know we had a hyperbarics place in Baton Rouge. I had no idea. And when I walked in that office, I mean, and like I said, you know, he's not your typical doctor. He's not white coat. And you're used to seeing the white coat. And he's got a Nike track suit on. And he's telling you just how it is. He's not giving you false hope. But he's also going to try. And he took a big leap with me because of, you know, no, no skull across the back of my head. And, you know, in hyperbarics, we're like, this could go really great or it could go really bad, but, it, you know, we're going to try. He's like, as long as you show up every day and keep trying, I'm going to keep trying for you. So that was the plan. And we ended up, you know, my friends would have to drive me because I just was so just so crummy I mean and I was detoxing off of you know we did detox off of all the opioids just he he and I the doctors wouldn't take me off of them and that was rough sorry for interrupting do you remember what was your protocol the hyperbaric protocol um it was going to be so I was at the lowest pressure I was at 1.3 probably yes and Mm -hmm. I was doing 90 minutes four times a week we did you, scans probably about a month in and I mean they were less than a month in and they were just dreadful <laughs> they I mean they were dreadful it was basically one percent brain everything blue which is not good nothing was going on up there and he he was astounded that I could put one foot in front of the other, let alone drive, or he was like, explain to me how you make this work. And I'm like, that's just what I know. And so we just kept doing it. And around the 50th session, I would say at 25, he opened the tank that one day and brain fog was finally gone. And I could look outside and see colors again and see that the sky was blue. Like, you know, it's blue, but you could see it was blue and the grass was green you know just things that you take for granted and you're like wow I can finally think I'm I'm, I mean literally he opened the door and I was like it's a whole new world I was like I don't know what you did but you did it and I was like okay so that's when I was like okay well this 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 might be something there might be something to this and I was like you know, just trying to educate myself along the way and asking questions and podcasts, listening to podcasts and just trying to get educated about brain injury because I had no education. They just turned me loose after my surgery. So I'm trying to figure out my whole new world. And then we just kept progressing. And around, say, 50, we retested and I was at 44% brain function and I came on hot. Everything was red now. We went from blue to red. (laughs) but that was good. At least it was back on. And we, I mean, in that time, we also worked on things like running my genetics and, you know, finding out what my body needed help with doing. We found out my body can't detox at all on its own. So, you know, we incorporated things like the foot detox and also the supplements to help my body, you know, do its job and not suffer so much. And then so, I mean, continued to progress and stayed on it. And then we incorporated the neurobiofeedback. And that was a, a pivotal point for, for definitely for my whole process. It was a game changer for me. And a friend of mine had, her daughter had a TBI, a severe TBI, and she's a nurse in Kansas. 
And she, the whole time she was telling me, hey, you need to find somebody that does neurobiofeedback. That's it's a game changer. Do you know how many sessions altogether do you think you got hyperbaric um, sessions? Probably about 250. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it's definitely something that I'm going to need to do for the rest of my life to maintain because, you know, I tried to go without and it just, I didn't realize how much it helped me mentally to just, you know, with, even with mental health issues with depression and things like that, it really helped those issues as well. And it, I mean, the clarity it gave me and the fact that for once in my life, I didn't have migraine and it, I, it gave me my life back. I cannot tell enough people about the benefits of hyperbarics, especially, and, you know, I think about, especially with all the horse you know, horse people involved, I'm like, oh my gosh, every single one of them needs to have a tank. Like, <laughs> that's the first, my first thought is just like, oh my God, that would be so beneficial, you know, and it, it's, there's, there's no downside, you know, and especially when you're compete, you know, if it's hyperbarics versus medications, it, it's a no brainer, you know, it's, 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 it's a no brainer and it's so safe that it, you can't not give it a shot. Absolutely. I agree with that hundred percent. And you mentioned horseback riders and I should say every athlete, whether you're competing or not, should get hyperbaric oxygen therapy treatments because Absolutely. of the injuries, because of the extra stress that is being put uh, on the body constantly from trainings, oh, yeah. competitions, um, mental uh, health issues are very common Absolutely. among athletes because athletes are viewed as very resilient, fit people. But even that, if you look at uh, different chronic diseases and their distribution among athletes, you would see that once they get to the certain age, they're really susceptible to all kinds of chronic disease because right. of that allostatic load, because of that stress that's being put on their shoulders day in, day out uh, for many yeah. years. I mean, in brain injury, it's just, it's so prevalent and just so, just skipped over a lot. Absolutely, um, because there's not, uh, because it's underdiagnosed. And you can't and see it. You can't see it. Exactly. So people, it's not a broken uh, arm. <laughs> exactly. So people mistake it for mental health issues or fatigue exactly. or this and that. And in fact, it's brain injury. But now more and more doctors are trained to be able to diagnose brain injuries and to treat brain injuries. And hyperbaric oxygen therapy is a part of protocol for brain injury yes. treatment. And it's really effective. We can see that both from the studies but also from clinical experience, from patient stories like yours, where hyperbarics maybe was not the only therapy, the only treatment that was applied, but it was still probably was the major part, right? Oh, yeah. Exactly, of what was done. And we can see the results and how it changes the quality of life and how it changes, um, like you said, whether it you changes. are here yeah. on this earth or not or not and whether you're you know addicted to opioids and or not and you don't stop and think that you fit in that category you know because you're not the socioeconomic class or whatever but you know I'd been on three different opioids for 10 years I was a drug addict I mean essentially I mean my doctor was my drug dealer you know and to and people don't think about that because it's a different setting and it's you're prescribed and all that other stuff, but that the damage that does to your body alone too, I mean, with your liver and all those kinds of things, it's just, it's, you know, and I, and I had, you know, ulcers developed from all that. And then you got to take medicine for that. And it's just a never ending cycle of chasing your tail with medications. And so you got to take something for the side effects of one medication, but then, you know, it's just, it's never ending. And before you know it, your body's just deteriorating from you trying to quote unquote treat it. And I, you know, and I'm not faulting physicians. I mean, it, it is what it is, but there is also other avenues that, you know, some doctors I noticed along my way when they graduate, it seems like they stopped learning 
And there's, there's your difference right there. It's the doctors that continue to learn and continue to broaden their horizons and continue to say, Hey, you know what, let's think outside the box a little bit and see where that gets us. That that's the game changer. And the people, you know, I understand you go through years of school and I appreciate that, but you know, sometimes out of the box thinking is exactly what you need. And Tina, thank you. Thank you for sharing this story because it takes absolutely. a lot of courage, you know, to, to say it over and over and over again. But if it helps one person, you know, that's my story, goal. Exactly. I'm sure it's then it makes more the, than one person. Yeah. I mean, that's you turn your mess into a message. Yeah, absolutely. Like Kelly said. Absolutely. Guys, if you have any questions, um, specific questions about the treatment, you can leave it in the comment section below. Otherwise, Absolutely. if you know someone who will benefit from this information, please share it with them. And I'll see you next week.